This video is sponsored by Squarespace. By putting all these stones, flat stones, I can prevent all this from getting a mud pole. I'm going to get an two or three bags more and cover just this area so I don't have to, you know, get so muddy when I sit here and get it in the tent. So uh, a little housekeeping before setting up the polar bear alarm. That should do. Nice. I was just filling up my water bottle and going to check the polar bear alarm and then suddenly I, the water is like a mirror and then I saw the little guy come up so and look and down again and oh, there it is. Yeah. oh 
everything is so misty because it's everything is damp. Oh, I really like this. difficult here because uh, it's impossible to find any way to focus and then suddenly he comes up and you have to be quick uh, he, sometimes he is up for two seconds sometimes for five seconds uh, but it was nice and he was actually much closer when I first went down here and then I ran up to get my camera and uh, it's always like this I come back with the camera and then he's further away. But the good thing about that is that uh, you've got some really nice photos with the uh, with the mountains in the background. Yeah. So it's up like 8,000 now to get a shutter speed of a hundredth of a second. Nice, lucky. A seal already. First seal on the trip. It's early morning and I'm just waiting for the water to boil so I can get my morning coffee. And this night has been a little crazy because now nothing happened. But in my mind uh, things were happening. I, I heard sounds and I heard footsteps like so every so often I would wake up and you know, get out of my sleeping bag, look there. And yeah, I don't know, in the dog slip patrol um, serious. We had all these dogs outside tent and cabin and 
they would hear if the bear would come and they are bear often came so I think it's still there now I'm only me with two ears two eyes and when I sleep it's it's not so nice because even though I have the polar bear alarm I think because before I fell to sleep I was like preparing the gun the the flare gun the I was thinking like what do I do if this happened what do I do if that happened and kind of got me a little like alert so well, this night hasn't been the best I've ever had but still it is nice to wake up here uh, on swell bar and just be able to look out sight and yeah see the landscape but now I cannot see the landscape because it's completely misty and very what to say hazy out there so yeah, I'm just starting the day in the tent uh, getting some breakfast getting some coffee get my equipment ready and hope I can dry things a little because it's still very very damp but uh, let's hope it'll clear up today Now I have the Primus inside the tent, which is really nice because then I can dry my gloves, my down jacket, my hats, everything, and my camera equipment. Because the last 24 hours has been raining, misty, everything is like a little damp. And as you know, when things are damp, it's hard to keep warm and everything is just, you know, moisture inside the camera all that kind of stuff is not so good so um So this is really nice. Finally, it's like the the clouds are lifting, and I can see so small spots of blue sky, and bah, it's amazing. The landscape is basically just opening up. Uh, it feels dry. It has stopped raining. Bah, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little cabin over there, or a ruin more. It's a little Russian or Norwegian trapper hut. Probably it has been destroyed many years ago. But I find it interesting to think that people have actually used that either as a shelter or lived there for, for some time. And I have to read up on that if I can find anything. I probably can. But um, I want to go have a look, look a little, because now there's small raindrops coming and yeah. I have to be careful, I'm not going into my own trap here. destroyed but you can see the the old stove and the chimney and the box with the still with the coals in it oh yeah this is nice let's have a look from the other side there's something really special about 
visiting places like this you know that strange feeling of like being on an old castle and maybe it's a tourist place and you walk there and then suddenly you get hit by this feeling of like how would it have been back in time and maybe if you close your eyes you you can still hear the the horses coming and seeing people wearing their old dress and like just traveling back in time it's like getting hit of, from the past or something it's difficult to explain but like when i look in here i see this coal basket and the old chimney and like i mean this this hut is so probably a meter and a, and a half and like i could definitely not fit in there but probably if people were a little smaller they they could be on the bench and uh, it, this is definitely not a place where people have stayed over the winter but rather a, a hunting cabin that's what i what i think like where people are traveling from the on the ice or setting up their traps and they were caught in bad weather or something like that this would be the place that they would go i think and they could fire up the stuff and get nice and warm and get dried their things and get in shelter until the weather would better and they could continue you know this thing to to lock the door is still there and because the air here in the high arctic is so dry like i mean in denmark this would have would have rotten away many years ago but yeah this is nice beautiful little friend you can probably stand here for a hundred more years or so Solar panels set up and sun is disappearing. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there's not a lot of wind now, so I'll just leave it there. Even though I only get like six watt as I do now, it's still better than nothing. And it might get enough power for things like charging one camera battery or the GoPro. It's actually not because I really need it because I have loads of batteries with me and I have a full uh, power bank, but um, I like to do this to get the experience, to get knowledge about in this time of the year here in the Arctic with a little cloud, how much do I get? And again, you know, it takes me three minutes, four minutes to set it up. And um, yeah, I think we can all benefit from 
better routines, more knowledge about the equipment we use. So at least now it's set up and uh, I can call myself lazy. <laughs> Let's go to look for animals. So I have been walking a little around looking for animals but I see nothing. It seems completely dead but um, that is how it is in the high arctic at least at this time of the year. In the spring or the summer it's like the amount of birds is just incredible. They come here to breed and you hear the geese and all the, you see, hear the birds everywhere. Quack, quack, quack. Um, but now here in uh, October, everything just seems, yeah, completely silent. It is like the land is preparing itself for a long winter. So uh, rather than just going around looking for the animals that might not be here, I rather enjoy the moment with a beautiful light and the landscapes, and then for once do a little landscape photography. Now that is exactly what I'm doing here. And it is kind of fun. I think it'll be more fun to find a fox, to be completely honest, but it is it is a little fun. And at least if I don't get a good photo of this, it's my fault because the landscape and the light is really, really beautiful. So uh, just look at these clouds moving over there between the mountains. See? Shit from the goose or geese. So at least they are here just a little earlier than me. The reindeer. Geese. More reindeer over here.
Ooh. This is extremely beautiful. Mountains like all kind of gray colors and then the white glacier and the clouds. This was definitely worth the hike. Oh, I shouldn't have brought so much, but you know, I just had that thing in mind. If I came up here and there were a fox or something, I would love to have the, the 800. So I brought that and of course some batteries and some water and a little food and some extra clothes if the weather changes and emergency radio, first aid kit. And then of course that rifle that always have to be here in case of polar bears. to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace lets you build professional looking websites without any knowledge about coding and web design. You simply choose one of the many great looking templates and by dragging and dropping photos and changing the text and colors you can make it your own. You can create beautiful galleries to showcase your work and it's very easy to update the gallery with your latest photos. It also has built-in e-commerce so you can start selling your prints, calendars and digital products. So if you need a new website, head over to squarespace.com to start your 14 days free trial. And you can use the off code Morten Hilmer to get 10% off your first purchase. I've put a link in the description. What happens now is if an animal comes into this and flip this... Okay, there's something I want to show you. Ooh. I wonder when he was there. Hopefully not now. <laughs> <laughs>